All right, guys. I think I'm in the right group now, uh, the right page for the live show. Let me know if I am. I'll wait for some people to come on. Adjust the camera real quick. All right, I got a viewer, so I'm seeing if I'm in the right place. All right, all right. So uh, I'm going to pick up where I left off. Uh, Derek Carr, I believe he does have some trade value. I don't, Like I said, I don't think we're going to get a one. I mean, unless, you know, we're packaging some other stuff together with that, but I don't see us doing that. So I think that if he stays, uh, we'll probably find somebody to mold behind him. But if not, uh, and we move on, I think we'll get a second or third rounder out of him, hopefully. Or like I said, we can use him to move around in the draft. Um, and, and that's my thoughts on that. So, all right, I got nine viewers now. All right, guys. So, uh, another thing I wanted to touch base with was I wanted to see if anybody thought that, uh, Gabe Jackson was going to be departing us, whether it be a cut or trade. Um, if anybody had any opinions on that, you can leave them in the comments. Yeah, I know Ortiz. I'm sorry, man. Kind of nervous about it. So it got me the first time. All right, but uh, yeah, like I said, I uh, went over some stuff about Jalen Rashard being the backup earlier. Uh, I do want to touch base with the giveaway again. Uh, again, it's nothing extravagant. Uh, Bo Jackson, uh, rookie card in the little plastic case, uh, the protector. So I'll do that before we go. Um, and I have some trinkets and gloves and key lanterns and stuff like that uh, in the future I'll be doing. Uh, I'm from Baltimore, Maryland. Again, I don't know if uh, too many people know, but uh, I live in a hometown of the Ravens, unfortunately, so there's not too many people to discuss Raider business with down here, so I'm looking forward to being on this. Yeah, second and third, that's that's definitely probably what we'll get. I like them as they move around in the draft as a piece, so I mean, say if we package something and move up, but like I said, I don't see that happening. But uh, again, I was going over Jacob Eason and Jake Fromm. I think that uh, both of them guys actually have some upside. So, and I think Gruden would be able to mold them. All right. Yeah, hey, I, I mean, I can't argue with you there. You got your opinion. If you think Carr is going to be a Raider for the next few years, I mean, I hope so because some of the options aren't great, but. Like I said, I spoke earlier on the options, and I and I like some of the options, but not I don't like him better than Derek Carr. Obviously, he's got a high completion percentage, and that's something that, you know I'm pretty fond of. I just wish he would take more chances with the long ball. I know the receiver situation is a little sketchy right now, but I don't think Tyrell Williams is the answer there either. So that's a whole another topic. Yeah, I seen I seen the signs that we made from the CFO. I think we did a running back in a corner. I I like both of them. They have strong promise. Uh, I tried to watch some of their highlights. There's not too much on them that I found, but I think they're pretty cool. So uh, we'll see how they work out. There'll probably be nothing more than practice squad uh, or camp bodies, but let's let's hope one of the guys make the team. All right, the views are climbing. I see everybody. Yeah, I like Fromm too, man. Like I said, he's great. So let's move on to the next topic. Uh, Gabe Jackson. I want some opinions from everybody about Gabe Jackson. Is he replaceable? Is he not replaceable? Should we cut him? Should we trade him? How does everybody feel about that? Chris, I see you said Rivers. That's interesting. But with the year he had last year, I think he's like, he, you know, he's on a decline definitely for sure. And I think he would probably cost... Not as much as, you know, what's going right now, but I think he would still be more than what Carr's costing us. And uh, I like his attitude, but I don't like his gameplay. He's, he's throwing a lot of picks. He's not up there with Jameis Winston yet, but he's getting there. So I think another year, if he plays, we'll see that, you know, I think he's pretty much lost it as far as, you know, play playtime goes because he ain't, he ain't got it. I mean, look at Eric Harris. Would he pick him off four times in a game? And they, they called, what, one back, maybe two? So, I mean, Harris hawked them all game, so there ain't no way. I would not take him. Marco, I see you said, said Gabe Jackson is a Raider for life. 
Yeah, but uh, I, I don't I don't think Gabe Jackson's gonna be around. Uh, something interesting I've seen is Brandon Scherf, if I'm correct, uh, pronouncing his name correctly. Um, he might cost two or three million dollars more a year annually. So I mean, that would be a kind of like the downside of the situation. But I think he's got it, and I think he's more the guy that Gruden wants in a line. He's kind of like he he don't remind me of Incognito as far as attitude and personality, but as far as gameplay goes, he's definitely a tough guy. So I, I definitely would like to see him get in there and get involved in our situation or whatever and see how it goes in Vegas. Um, I think Gabe Jackson would bring in more of a value probably than Carr would, honestly, at this point, because there's a couple of teams that are hurting for linemen and they need somebody that's going to jump in right away. They don't need somebody that's going to, you know, just hang back and learn and then get involved. You know, if they want to win, they're going to need somebody to jump in. Maybe they're a few pieces away. So... But, yeah, um... I think that, it, you know, it's great, you know, that uh, everybody's interacting. Gabe's in the same place. Yeah, I mean, the first two picks in the draft might be receiver and linebacker. Uh, I've seen people saying that Mayock kind of said, you know, he didn't want to draft a receiver in the first round or they were all overrated. Um, I didn't really see that anywhere that I read, but it kind of gave me the hint that we might go D-tackle or corner in the first uh, along with linebacker. I know linebacker is definitely going to be something that we address in the first round because, I mean, name the last time that we had a solid linebacker. Like, think about it for a second, guys. When's the last time we had somebody that, you know, was homegrown? It's been a while. And we've had, you know, guys come and go from different teams and it's they're still not producing. And that linebacker spot and that uh, safety spot has been really killing us for a few years. So, you know, I think if we fill up them gaps there, you know, our defense will, will stack up better against opposing offenses. So I, I think that would be something that we can do. Yeah, with the O-line car is replaceable. I agree. I agree. Our O-line is great. I tell people that all the time down here in Baltimore. They, they're telling me, you know, you guys don't have a great O-line. You guys don't have, yeah, we, we got a good O-line. And me, I would say we're probably top three. O lines in the league, and that's just my personal opinion. That's not fact or statistics. Yeah, everybody's hyped for the draft. I'm definitely hyped. There's a lot of talent coming out this year. I mean, it's it's going to be deep. I mean, I think you're probably going to get starters all the way up into the fourth round. I mean, we would get that anyway because we got Money Mike drafting for us. So you know, that's that's understandable. But I think a lot of people are going to get a lot of mid to late round starters this year. This draft, it isn't looking too bad. Last year I was real hype, but this year this this draft ain't got nothing on last year's. I like uh, one guy I like at safety is Winfield. I'm not sure what I want to say Minnesota, but I might I'm probably wrong. Um, I like him. I I've, you know I've seen a little bit of tape on him. I think he's all right. That would be somebody to help out at uh, safety and uh, linebacker. I'm thinking we bring in maybe somebody like Blake Martinez from the Packers. I think he would like, you know, he'd be a great leader on that defense, especially in the linebacking core. And I think he might, you know, he might have some probability of coming off the edge as a, you know, off the ball kind of guy too sometimes. So I think that would be pretty great. Yeah, Patrick Queen, I see that too. Yeah, um, I like him, but I'm not really sure that he's a first rounder yet to me. I mean, I know he's sideline to sideline kind of guy, but as as of safeties and linebackers going to draft right now, I think Grant Delpit's the only safety that probably should go in the first, and I think he's going to start falling. I think we're going to see him slide on the board a lot. So, But uh, the linebackers, I think other than Simmons, which he's actually a safety linebacker hybrid, so other than Simmons, I don't see nobody going linebacker that's in the top 20, 25 picks besides, uh, I mean, us, honestly. I mean, I know the Panthers are hurting when Keekley retired, so I know that's you know that's a spot that they would like to address. Um I know Jacksonville would like somebody uh, with my, what, uh, I can't even think of the guy's name now. Miles Jack. I know they would like somebody with him. But, uh, they, you know, like, I don't check out any of their teams like that, so I don't know what their cap situation's like or what their roster's rounding up to be. But, I mean, I think if we're going to want Simmons, we're going to have to move up. So, with that being said, I think we can address linebacker in the second round if we were to move back or, or trade up with a couple picks in the third and move into the second. I think that we'd be able to get somebody in the second that would be able to help command a vet come in and, and they would be the two go-to guys on linebacker. I don't think that Tahir Whitehead is the guy. And don't get me wrong, he's a great person off the field. Uh, you know, he's a great leader, but I just don't think his coverage skills are, are decent. Like, I don't even think they're decent. And I think between him 
and some of the safeties that we rotated in and out uh, this year, I think that that's what really hurt us. And I know losing Abrams was a big thing. But as far as that goes, I mean, he got hurt. We can't do nothing about that. You know, two of, two of our three first-round guys stayed healthy, healthy for most of the year. I know Jacobs missed a couple games, but, you know, I, I feel like that he wanted to go and he could have went. But, you know, two out of three guys in the first round staying healthy ain't bad. 66%, you know what I'm saying? So I'm just glad that uh, everybody was intact, and I'm glad that Abram's serious. Uh, injury wasn't that serious to where he would be out more than, you know, this season. So, But when he comes back, I think – He's going to be looking to, to make some hits, and I think he's looking to command the defense far, as far as DBs go. Um, I think he's got a lot of leadership talent being such a young guy, so I'm glad I'm glad we went after him. I'm definitely him. Yeah, the secondary gives up a lot of plays. They do need help. Um, there's a lot of guys that I like in the draft, but like I said, Winfield stands out. But I think he's a guy that you could kind of insert in a rotational type deal. Um I don't see us going after anybody strong as far as safety, just for the fact that we got Harris back there under contract right now, unless we, we were to, you know, clean him off the board somehow. Uh, you know, we got Joyner moving back to free safety, allegedly. Uh, we got Nixon that can play the slot and corner, you know, and also play a little bit of safety. Uh, who knows if Worley's coming back. So, yeah, I agree. We need to get rid of Nick Morrow. I think he would be a good, you know, depth guy as far as, you know, maybe three or four down on a depth chart. But I don't think he's going he's gonna to make any big splashes. I, I don't want it all. I think the only linebacker that we have under contract right now that is going to help us out is Markel Lee. And again, I don't think he's going to be one of them guys that come in and make big plays. I don't think he's going to start. I think he's going to be somebody, you know, that they put in to give, you know, our go-to guy to break. So I definitely agree with you there. Um... There's a couple of people, I think, as far as uh, our defensive line goes that, you know, we could shuffle around or move on from. Um, some people I do want to keep. I definitely want to keep Arden Key and Deion Jordan. I've been seeing a lot of talk about if they're coming or going or if we're going to get rid of Key. Um, I think Key and, and, uh, and Deion Jordan are going to be around for maybe another year because we're going to need depth of that position. So, I mean, Farrell and Crosby, yeah, and then, you know, if we grab somebody in free agency, a big name. Or, you know, if we grab somebody in a draft that just happens to slide to us and, it, and you know, it's fate. So I think uh, Deion Jordan and Arden Key are going to be some bright spots this year. I don't, I don't think they're going to go out and get 10 sacks. But, you know, I think they might go out and, you know, get some QB hits, open up some, some, some spots for some big plays. And I think they'll help, you know, the rest of the line get some rest when, when time's needed. Yeah, they do keep moving around. I do agree with you there. I, I can see what you're saying there. I, yeah, I definitely noticed that. But, uh, you know, if, if I feel like this. If you're a defensive lineman, you should be able to play inside and outside. So, you know what I mean? If you excel at one and not the other, great. But, you know, Morrow hasn't really excelled at any linebacking spot at all. So, I mean, I think it's just time that we just, you know, push him out the door. Like I said, I don't think he's a terrible player, but I think he's a decent player. But he's not the guy that's going to make the splash, and he's not going to command you know, greatness from the other guys on the team. He's just there to me, you know, just to play and, and take a body spot up. And I don't I don't think that's somebody we need. I, I think people are going to want to come in, and I think they're going to, you know, be with the new stadium, and they're going to see, you know, everything that Scruton has done over the last, you know, year or two. And I think they're going to want to ball out. I think a lot of, a lot of leaders are going to want to come to our team because they know there's a spot right now for leaders open. And, you know, they want that to be a viable option. They want to go in there, you know, they want to get everybody pumped. They want to get hyped up. They want to do this and that, you know what I'm saying? And plus, Vegas is attractable. Who wouldn't want to be in Vegas? I mean, I know some of our players might get in some trouble down there in Vegas, but I'm hoping that all that's behind us because I don't want no more suspensions or no more freak accidents or anything like that because I want us to be 100% full capacity and going strong in 2020. I'm telling you, it's we're due, guys. We're definitely due. I've been a Raiders fan since I was a little kid, and I'm 32 now, so... I definitely want to see, you know, some kind of playoff push or playoff run. And, I mean, even if they can stay, you know, up in the division until the last game or two, you know, and catch a wild card, you know, I, I'd, I'd be happy with that all day. Yeah, I think Farrell will have a good season this year. I mean, four and a half sacks last year, it wasn't great, but, you know, a lot of people have done worse. So, I mean, he's got promise. He definitely does. And he, he also played on the inside a lot this year. So, you know, that's not something he did a whole lot. 
you know, throughout his uh, college career. So for him going in there and adjusting like that, I, I think he made good strides. I mean, he's not no Max Crosby. Don't, don't get me wrong. I, I'm very high on Max Crosby, always was. I love small school guys because they're the ones that are going to come out and they're going to surprise you, you know, most of the time. I mean, even if it's for a year, maybe two, but I'm hoping that if Crosby, you know, has the attitude he had this year and picks up steam, I think he's going to be a 12, 13 sack guy all day through his career if he just stays healthy and focuses on the game. Yeah, I'm kind of worried about that too. I do like, I do like Vontaze, man. I really do. But at this point, you, you got to look for a guy that's going to be there all 16 games, can stay healthy and stay out of trouble. Now, I know them hits... You know, they could have won either way, but I don't think they should have suspended him that long. And I, you know, and I, and I agree 100% with that. But, you know, it happened, and I, I believe it's going to keep happening. I mean, unless we draft John Runyon's son, or I don't know if that's his son that's coming out in the draft, the guard, you know, and he has some hookup with Pops, you know, uh, which I doubt it would be great for us. But, you know, I, I just, you know, I just... I don't know, man. It just It's frustrating to talk about sometimes, you know what I mean? Because I just want somebody to come in there and lay hard hits. But every time we do, it seems like they want to call a whistle. You know, they want to call a flag. They want to suspend somebody. So, Vontez Bursafit, uh, Burs good guy. Uh, I love him as a player, but I, I just don't think he's a fit for us. I just don't. I really don't. All right, Nancy, I see you said Foster. I like, uh, I like Foster Moreu, if that's who you're talking about. I definitely like him. He's a good guy. Uh, I like his hands. You know, he's not he's not too shabby. Like he's like like he's not as big as Waller, but he can rush down the field. You know, and he can catch the ball. You know, he he might even be you might be able to pitch him the ball a couple times at fullback. I like his style. You know what I mean? He's a good player. Um, I'm looking forward to him being here for a few years. Hopefully, you know, we lock him down uh, when it's contract time for him. He had a couple incredible catches last year that I was like, this guy's not catching. And he called him, you know, and he shocked me. So I'm looking forward to seeing him out there and catching some more. Uh, C.D. Lamb. Um, I would like to have Lamb, but, you know, if he falls us and that's the best option there and we're going to take a receiver in the first, I mean, yeah, it, it could be C.D. Lamb, but I'm, I'm more along the lines of Jerry Judy. I think just, just for, you know the purpose of him being a great route run, uh, route runner and causing separation and getting away, you know, from the DBs. I think that's, that's something we need and he don't have to be super fast. I mean, if he's got good route running skills and he could turn on a pinch, I think, I think that's cool. But, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, I'm definitely, definitely interested in that. So, I mean, the only other thing I could really say is, Excuse me. The only other thing I can say is to wait till, I would say, the third round. I mean, if you want to wait for a receiver, if all the great ones are taken off the board. Um, I'm hoping that, uh, I guess I'm just hoping that uh, we grab somebody good at receiver. I think uh, Denzel Mims, I think that's his name. I don't know his first name. I usually just go off last names from looking through the, the stats and the, and the college game tapes and stuff. Um, I like him. I like Tyler Johnson out of Minnesota. I also like Tyler Vaughn's. Um, Justin Jefferson. I mean, there's a lot of players that we could we could get if they fell to us, you know, third round or if we move up into the second. I think it's you know it's just plain to say that we can grab some decent people there. So I don't think it's going to be bad if we wait on receiver till the mid rounds. But if I had to personally pick, uh, I, I'm I'm real high on T Higgins. He's a big body guy. I mean, he's quick for his size. You know, he can get open. I know there's some minor injury concern there, but. You know, who who doesn't have a little bit of injury concern here and there? Yeah, CD does have better better uh, yards after catch. I, I, I see that. Um, but I just, you know, we always have people that can get yards after catch as far as, uh, you know, Josh Jacobs catching the ball at the backfield, getting some yards, Hunter Renfro, um, you know, even the other receivers a couple of times. A. Jones got some. That That's cool. But I want to look for the guy that, you know, you can throw the ball down the field 50 yards to and he's going to go up and grab it one hand. And I think Jerry Judy's that guy. And I know we're a short pass offense. Yeah, definitely. But uh, I think that they're going to open up the playbook more this year. I think they're going to, you know, John Gruden and them are going to incorporate more of a, a longer, a long ball kind of situation. Um, I'm not going to say it's going to be constantly, but I think we're going to open it up a little bit more this year. And uh, regardless who's our quarterback, whether it's D.C. or if it's a rookie or if it's a bridge guy, I mean, 
who knows, you know what I mean? None of us can tell. Um, but if we're going to go for the dink and dunk offense, which has been classic Gruden over the last couple years, yeah, a guy like Henry Ruggs or CeeDee Lamb would be cool, you know? So, I mean, yeah, that, that, that would definitely be good. But uh, I'm just looking for the big plays, you know? That's why we all watch football, you know what I mean? We want to see our team win. We want to see big plays, you know? We want to see one-handed grabs. And like I said, I think Judy is that guy. Like, I'm telling you, I think he's that guy, but I don't see him falling to us. So my, my next personal option would be T. Higgins. If T isn't there, then like I said, you wait till the mid-rounds. You grab a couple guys in the mid-rounds. And I mean, you got Michael Pittman. I mean, you got other people, big body guys that, you know, that are quick for their size. And I think it's great that, you know, they're going to fault us because I think a lot of defense is going to come off the board in the first two rounds. And that's just, you know, my opinion. Uh, opinion. I think a lot of offensive linemen, too, are going to come off the board in the first two rounds. I think we're going to see a lot of players slide because, you know, the D tackles and the offensive linemen, whether it be guard, you know, or tackle or center. So it, it definitely would be cool. Um, I've seen somebody says Emmanuel Sanders. Yeah, I mean, I like Emmanuel Sanders, uh, I, you know, from seeing him play with the Broncos and stuff like that, you know, when he was our division rival and when he was over there. Um, I don't, I'm not opposed to him, but like I said, I don't think that uh, – I don't think Sanders is going to be, uh, you know, nothing but more than a one-year option. I mean, if he stays healthy, that'd be great, you know. I mean, I know he balls out occasionally, but he's kind of, to me, like Emmanuel Sanders is like an older Amari Cooper. Uh, 12, I mean, who I think we're going to get and who I want, I mean, obviously it's going to be different. I mean, I want Simmons at 12. But I, I probably think we're going to end up probably grabbing, we're probably going to jump up and grab a linebacker. I mean, and that's to be, I mean, we're going to just do safe. I think we're going to go safe in the first round and we're going to grab players we need. So, I mean, if anybody else moves up, you know, because of the combine or whatever. And, you know, if, if we move up and get a linebacker and we bite early, I mean, so be it. I mean, it ain't nothing wrong with that. I mean, yeah, we could have got somebody else, but you seen the pick last year with Farrell. And we, we, you know, we went up and got him at four. We were already there, but we got him at four, and nobody expected him to go till later on in the first. You know, he slid down the boards dramatically as, you know, the year went on. So I think uh, we could see a situation where, you know, we grab a Kenneth Murray or, you know, a Patrick Queen, as somebody mentioned earlier. We might just jump on board and grab somebody quick. I'm hoping that's not the case, but that, you know, that may be the case. So um, I'm thinking that uh, if Simmons isn't there, you know, if we don't, and if we don't bite on another linebacker, I think we're probably going to see a D lineman go. I mean, there's a lot of D linemen that are going to be there in the top 20, 25 picks. So I think, you know, maybe even uh, Matos, I uh, can't pronounce the rest of his, the first, his first part of his name, but uh, Matos, he's definitely a solid player. I watched some tape on him. Um, I think that's, you know, that's a good player to get there. Um, Derek Brown, if he falls, um, I really like uh, Javon Kinlaw from South Carolina. I really like that guy. Um, is he worth a 12, you know, first, first round pick at 12? I don't know. Um, we'll have to see some stuff at the combine and the grades and stuff. Yeah. And the linebackers and wide receivers are iffy because, you know, I mean, we've seen some great linebackers come out in, in recent years and, you know, in 2014, we had the greatest wide receiver class. But other than that, I mean, really think about who's came out like Calvin Ridley and, you know, the only person that came out in the last couple of years that I think is worth mention, mentioning is Samuel. Uh, from the Niners so I mean he, he's definitely a good receiver you've seen what he did in the Super Bowl I mean he couldn't get him there but you know he was making plays and, and running the ball and doing stuff like that so there hasn't been too many people oh uh, is there money in the bag uh no nah, actually that's uh I was I forgot to bring that up thank you for saying something um that's where I got some of the Raider stuff I plan on giving away so you know every time I, I decide to give something away we're gonna go money in the bag and I'm gonna pull something out maybe one or two things and the person can decide between them but tonight, um, I know it's not nothing extravagant, uh, extravagant, but it's a Bo Jackson rookie card in a plastic piece. I will send it to you if somebody wants it. Uh, you know, if, if if they if they get whatever question I ask at the end right, and I already have a question picked out. Um, it's semi Raider related, so yeah, we'll do that here soon. Uh, once I go to get off here in a minute. But uh, anybody else what, has anything else that they want to talk about or, you know, say or anything like that? You win, Nancy. Yeah, you've been commenting the whole time, and I appreciate the love for sure. You definitely win. You won my heart.
Yeah, we definitely did pass on him, but uh, you know, it's we pass on players all the time. You've seen it throughout the years. Um, I forget which year it is off the top of my head. We grabbed Robert Gallery over what, like Larry Fitzgerald or something. Like, I mean, we we definitely made some questionable picks, but you know, you know, picks have been. It, it just you never know. That's why I I feel like we need to go out and get the players we need in free agency. And I think we just need to you know need to do it right this time. So. I'm thinking that everything uh, is going to fall into place in 2020. I think that, uh, you know, some new faces are going to come in. We're going to see some people that, you know, you're not expecting to go, go before the season starts. I'm definitely thinking that. So I think we might see three or four players that we think, oh, they're secure. But I think that uh, they might be traded or cut to make cap space. Yeah, that is us Raiders. I mean... You know, love it or hate it, I, I definitely, I definitely will stay on board with the Raiders all my life. You know what I mean? It's, you know, I didn't have a lot of uh, activities growing up like I, I that I love to do, but I love to play the video game and play as the Raiders, and that grew into me being a spontaneous Raider fan at like what nine or ten years old. And ever since, you know, it's been silver and black. I got bed sheets, I got pajamas, you know, I got all the little gear and jerseys and stuff, and I just, you know, it's just something that hits home for me when you talk about the Raiders. You know, their attitude and. You know, how they present yourself and the commitment to excellence and all that stuff. Uh, you know, I, I, just, I just, you know, it's just a big thing to me. I love it. Yeah, I think Mayock's going to hit on drafts every year that he's our GM. I mean, that's what he did. You know, he did it for so many years. It isn't like, you know, Mayock didn't know football prior to him coming in. I mean, he, you know, he's football bred, him and Gruden both. All right, guys, so I'm going to wrap it up if anybody doesn't got nothing else uh, they want to talk about. I'm going to work on more content for you guys. Uh, like I said, this is just my first show that is being seen to the public like that. Um, you know, I might have tripped over some words and made some mistakes and, you know, definitely got on the wrong page, which is my fault. Um, but I'm definitely excited to do this. This is something that, you know, I've been wanting to do for a while. Uh, and when I reached out to the commission, we had a conversation uh, you know, I felt blessed that he asked me to do this. Um, I'm definitely going to be respectful. Uh, you know, I'm definitely going to come on here and I'm going to be respectful to all you guys. Um, I'm not going to disrespect you in any way by, you know, cussing and carrying on. Uh, I just hope that I get more viewers and that more people interact with me, keep me busy, you know, in the downtime. Uh, and I just, you know, hope everybody has a great night and I will see you guys. Oh, you know what? I got to do the thing. Um, Question for the card. Uh, what quarterback, well, former Raiders quarterback, currently is a starting quarterback for an XFL team? And what team is it? And I'll wait a couple of minutes to see if anybody gets this answer. Don't cheat and Google it. If you read around, that's cool. But if you, I mean, I guess if you got to Google it, then Google it. But for the Bo Jackson card, what former Raider quarterback, it's been recent. It's been recent. What former Raiders quarterback is an XFL starting quarterback now for what team? Thank you, Mike. I appreciate the love, man. I definitely do. I'm looking forward to, you know, hearing from you guys and seeing you guys on here and interacting for sure. It's definitely been all love. Connor Cook, I think uh, Connor Cook, I think he might be on the team as a as a as a quarterback, but I don't think he's a starting quarterback. Connor Cook is definitely on a roster, but I'm not sure if he's a starter. I didn't see him on the list of starters on the list that I pulled up. It's another quarterback. You're awfully close, guys. You're awfully close. He was on the roster at the same time as Connor Cook. I'll give you a hint. His initials are both the same. His first and last initials are both the same. No more recent uh, 
lines more recent. Um, I'm going to put it this way. He played and went down. Yup. There we go. Dare White. Bo Jackson card if you want it. Uh, inbox me your information. Find me here on Facebook. Request me. Uh, get on here and uh, send me all your info and I'll, I'll get it sent out to you tomorrow. We're first thing Saturday. I'll go to the post office down here. They, they're open for a couple hours in the morning. So I'll definitely get it sent out to you. Alright everybody. So let me scroll up and see. Yep, Marcos is definitely the winner. Nancy Marcos won the Bo Jackson uh, rookie card tonight. Like I said, nothing special, people. I'm just trying to show some appreciation, you know, and let everybody know I appreciate them watching. And I'm going to do little giveaways like this, you know, periodically. Just to let you guys know I care, you know, and I'm going to be here for a while. So look forward to dealing with the rest of you guys and interacting. So good night, and I hope you enjoyed. This is the uh, Raider Process Show.